Eh. Hello there, you little demons. I nearly went too far there. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you. Yes, you, Alex. Hope you're doing well, my friend. That big event that's coming up here, don't worry about it. You have got this. The reason I'm doing this is because somebody on the previous video said that they wanted a very specified call out, and I'm going to start doing them. So Alex, hope you're doing well my friend. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we have none other to thank than... <laughs> Detractor Doom for their suggestion of the worst time limit sections in video games. You know what my friend, I'm not a detractor of this suggestion because trust me, there are a lot and just choosing eight was very hard to pin down. But you know what, I've got the time, so let's get on with it. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the eight worst time limit sections in video games. See how I cut the intro down? I'm saving you time, because it's terrible. Right, anyway, moving on. Number eight, Demolition Man from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Now, although Grand Theft Auto San Andreas' hellish RC mission supply lines is often held up as the toughest timed mission in the series' history, at least that is entirely optional. The same cannot be said for Vice City's mind grain inducingly difficult Demolition Man, which requires players to pilot an RC helicopter to pick up four bombs and deliver each to a set point at Avery Carrington's construction site. Now, a seven minute time limit might actually seem pretty generous, especially, say, if you were comparing it to, I don't know, like your own lovemaking duration. Let's move on from that one there. But it is very difficult because you've got to go across different floors and Avery's construction workers are trying to rip you from the very skies. Add to this the dodgy camera and RC physics and Demolition Man is a recipe for rage quitting, or in the very least, ditching the main story and just messing around in Vice City sandbox mode forevermore. Thankfully, though, the definitive edition of this game added 30 seconds to the timer. Hey, I thought we were done talking about my lovemaking activities. <laughs> and also, when you failed the mission, you could instantly restart from that mission rather than have to go all the way back to the checkpoint. So yes, small blessings. Rest of the definitive edition though. Number seven, Catcher Chocobo, Final Fantasy X. Okay, my friends, so there is a special circle of hell for the person who came up with the idea for the mini game of the Chocobo racing in Final Fantasy X, and a especially barbed wire chair for them to sit upon for the Catcher Chocobo, which requires you to beat the Chocobo trainer in zero seconds. Yes, that's right, zero seconds. Now, you see, the course is populated with red balloons, which, when popped, will wipe three seconds off of your time, and so you have to hit enough of them to eliminate your entire time spent racing. Couple that with needing to avoid incoming flocks of birds, each of which will add three seconds to your time, and this is an absolutely sanity-eroding test of the player's willingness for self-flagellation. Now, don't get me wrong, the reward for actually doing this is the Sun Sigil, which will allow you to upgrade T his ultimate weapon, which I'm just going to have to read it here. The Kalad Bolg. Just chuck a load of letters together. That will make a name. But the point being is, is that you are going to really, really want to do this in order to put yourself through this RNG hell. If you thought that the recent Chocobo stealth missions from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth were bad, this, this takes the bloody take and piss. Number six, driving mission 34, Gran Turismo 4. So perhaps the single toughest challenge in any Gran Turismo game to date is the 34th and final driving mission in Gran Turismo 4. While driving the 2003's Mercedes SLR McLaren, players must not only beat the Mercedes 300 SL Coupe to complete a lap of the ultra-tricky Nuremberg, what they've got to do is do it with a time handicap of 123 seconds. In short, driving mission 34 is utter bullshit. Crikey. And there's so much to hate about this mission. From the fact that you have to do one perfect lap and if you clash into any of the five AI races there or go off the track once it's- Five second penalty. Or the fact that the game makes you sit through the full 123 second handicap. It doesn't just start with that already in tow. You have to sit there just going, 
Oh boy, this is fun. As such, this is a race that has no respect at all for the player's time. And given that a single run to the finish can take around nine minutes with the handicap included, you can spend hours and hours and hours just trying to beat this monstrosity. Because of this, this mission actually ends up being the sole reason why many players of Gran Turismo 4 haven't actually 100%ed it. They've done everything else bar this. No thank you, sir. Number five, Penitence Bridge Riddler Trophy, Batman Arkham Knight. Now, opinion does vary over which is the worst Riddler trophy to get in all of the Batman Arkham franchise, but um, this one definitely is up there. And isn't it kind of telling that maybe the Riddler trophies were definitely overstaying their welcome when there's this many bad ones to choose from? Under Penitence Bridge on Miyagani Island, a Riddler trophy requires you to hit four switches in just three seconds while keeping two pressure pads activated. Mercifully, at least, the timer doesn't begin until you hit one of the switches, but even so, it is one massive pain in the ass. Firstly, you need to use a voice synthesizer to command a nearby Riddler bot to stand on one of the pressure pads while you stand on the other, and then you need to use explosive gel on the two switches closest to you. Then stand on the pressure pad, throw your batarang at the other two switches across the way, immediately detonate the explosive gel, and you should should get it all done within three seconds. Now, in all fairness, this is actually a challenge that is truly befitting of the Riddler, because when you go up to it originally, you'll think, oh, I've just got to hit all four switches with my Batarang. But then you realize that is impossible. But you only probably realize this after, I don't know, say 37 minutes. I definitely wasn't counting. Probably on me at that point. Number four, Sewer Escape, Ratchet and Clank. Whoa, 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 what's this all about? Ratchet and Clank appearing on a game with the most difficult time sections? I mean, these games are mildly challenging at best. I mean, I can't say that they have ever made me sweat. Well, this sewer section definitely had those big greasy tears rolling down my face. Because you need to race through a sewer that's quickly flooding with water, sprinting through an obstacle course of platforms and amoeboids that are primed to slow you down, all before the water fills the area and drowns you. Now, getting hit by any enemy will slow you down by precious seconds, and your limited oxygen supply makes it incredibly easy to accidentally drown during the few parts where you need to swim underwater, especially in the final sections. Now, you can use the helipack to shave a few much needed seconds off, but even so, you might end up spending a damn afternoon getting through this given the brutally thin margin for error. If your timing is off, or you hit an enemy, or you mistimed a jump for a single platform, you might as well give up and restart again. Evidently, the developers of this game forgot that this is meant to be a game for children. But it had me crying like a boohoo baby, so maybe they were still right there. Number three, hope cannot save them, tier three, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now the ultimate test in Star Wars Battlefront 2's arcade mode is hope cannot save them, where you have to kill 40 rebels in 40 seconds. Now, I don't know if you're an absolute math whiz like I am, but I did the calculations, I made sure that I double and triple checked my results, and that boils down to, I believe, not 100% sure, I'm doubting myself right now, one rebel a second. Am I right? Am I right? There is a shocking round of applause, so I'm nodding. Well done, me! The problem is, though, that it's extremely tough to track down 40 enemies to kill within that time frame, especially as they'll generally flee upon seeing you, and so it can take dozens of attempts to complete this challenge. Now, while you can be smart about it and make sure that you herd a lot of these dupes, hurdy-gurdy style, into one corner before opening fire, because the timer doesn't actually start until you start firing, it's still an incredibly tricky proposal. And even more so when the developers actually patched the AI pathfinding because they were like, oh, uh, lads, <laughs> let's not all just stand together. That'd be really silly. Like, safety in numbers, in nature, when does that work? Every single documentary that you see that they all just ball up together and just go, oh, they'll never kill all of us, they end up all being killed. Swim in a ball, boys. Swim in a ball, boys. Swim in oh, look, there's a big tasty ball. They've, con they've congealed in one space said the Predator. Number two, a Labyrinth Zone, Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, Sonic the Hedgehog's Labyrinth Zone doesn't saddle players with an overall time limit, but this being the first zone in the game to go underwater, it does introduce a time-sensitive mechanic where players will drown if they don't find either air bubbles or reach the surface within a set time. After around 18 seconds underwater without reaching an air bubble, a terrifying alarm sound effect will begin. You know the one, yeah, th this one, uh-huh. 
Hmm, cool. Ah, uh, it's one of the few times that I wish that copyright would prevent us from putting this in. <laughs> sick. Signaling to players that poor old Sonic here is about to run out of oxygen and die. If you go 30 seconds without replenishing your air or reaching the surface, Sonic is indeed cooked. But here's the thing, that alarm sound, it's quite stressful, as is the concept of dying underwater. So panicked players start making mistakes, they take longer, and obviously you are still underwater, so you control so slow. Holy that you like, I'm dying here. Overall, Labyrinth Zone isn't an especially punishing part of the game, but Sega really turned the pressure up whenever Sonic is required to get wet. And number one, save the Oracle, God of War. So midway through the original God of War, you're forced into a frustrating divergence from all the hack and slash mayhem, as you are tasked now with rescuing the Oracle of Athens, who has been attacked by harpies, that's a Dragon's Dogma reference, and has been inexplicably left hanging from a rope. Now you've got 67 seconds to get them down, but uh-oh, it turns out that there's a slight problem. It seems that the uh, normal run-up to rescue them has been replaced with the training section from the f Disney Hercules film because there are so many traps, enemies and obstacles in your way that it is actually comical. And there's no little Philatites at the side going, you got him kid, go get him, technically I'm naked. Now you can save yourself a few precious seconds by jumping at every possible moment because it's actually marginally quicker than running, but even so you're unlikely to get through this with more than a couple of seconds to spare, and that's after failing numerous times. And rather optimistically, Sony decided to add an achievement in when they came to reintroduce players to this monstrosity. <laughs> For having 10 seconds left on the clock. I'm sorry? I'm sorry? Are you f kidding? And there we go, my friends. Those were the eight worst time limit sections in video games. What did you think about that? Let me know down below. And also put your suggestions for next week's episode down there as well. Now, I won't beat around the bush. I won't waste your time. Follow me over here on the social medias here. Follow the editor over here. Do that, do that now. But also, take care of yourself. Treat yourself with love because you bloody well deserve it. You are the absolute best, my friend. A massive, monstrous ledge. And you should always remember that, okay? Treat yourself with that love and self-respect. As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. And I gotta go, my friend. Time is not on my side. But I'll see you next week. Bye!